blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with a whole heart. They also do not do iniquity, they walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded, commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Somebody say, I'm giving God my best praise. Come on, I'm giving God my best praise. I'm not praising him for you, but I'm praising him because he's been so good to me. Amen. Clap your hands and we get our youth. Encourage him.
love this verse in this far. I was I was reading something on Facebook just before I got here. And one of my Facebook friends, who is also a client of mine, had passed away. And um, I remember this gentleman because it was one of my biggest, one of my biggest um, days that I had. And he was only in his 40s or maybe mid-50s, and he passed away. And his family was saying, you know, it was unexpected and he's not suffering anymore. And, and then as I was reading on further down my Facebook, another Facebook friend said they went to a funeral yesterday, and she'd never seen this before in her life. She'd never been to a funeral. They, they were having six funerals at the same time. Six funerals at the same time. She was fifth. There were four people in front of her that they were burying their loved ones, and then there was one after, a funeral after she got finished. What am I saying? It's grateful to be in the land of the living. That's right. Amen. I said it's grateful to be in the land of the living. I understand that we might have our trials and our tribulations, and we might have some circumstances that might not be agreeable to us, but God is yet good. God is yet worthy to be praised, and we are so grateful to be here. Just to be breathing means I got another chance. Yes, God. Just to be breathing says I can still make it. Just to be breathing says my future is brighter than what it is today. So we are grateful and we are thankful for the things that He has done, what God has done. Hey, Amen. Give a clean clap to our youth. Hey, Amen. Oh my goodness. Sound is so good, amen. One accord. We thank God for them letting their talents and their gifts be used. At this time, we're going to get ready for our morning announcements. Amen. We ask that you might just uh, listen attentively to all the announcements that will be made. for the week. Please join us on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for 15 minutes of powerful prayer at 6.45 a.m. Monday's prayer will be led by our missionary department, on Wednesday by our ministerial staff, and on Friday by the greatest jurisdiction on this side of heaven, the Florida Eastern Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. You can join us by dialing in to 712-832- 8330. Again, that is 712 832 8330. The access code is 810 9934 and pound just like that you're in. Also, join us on Tuesday night for Bible study with our very own Superintendent Lawrence and Lady Lawrence and whatever special guests that they may have. You can join us on social media at 7 30. Upcoming events, ladies. Ladies night will be on this coming Friday. Please RSVP with Minister Colt by Monday. If you wish to register for our upcoming Women's Day, which will be in October, you can do that by visiting our website at mbmoocogic.org. The registration form is there, and additional information will follow from Minister Cole. Also, our fifth Sunday fellowship is coming up. We will be worshiping in Palatka, Florida. Those that wish to attend the service, there will be a van going down to Palatka, Florida. Please contact Deacon David Inez to confirm your um, travel arrangements. The men will be having their annual men's day on September the, I don't have a date, but there will be a, 
I apologize. Second Sunday in September, there will be the annual Men's Day at 11 a.m. All men, please contact Vegan Elect. Hope for your responsibility. Marriage Ministries, date night in the park, September the 26th at 6.30 p.m. in Altamont, calling all married couples of new beginnings. These conclude our announcements for this morning. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise we the Lord. ask that you govern yourself according to the announcements. Amen. We thank God for our, I hope everybody's getting, is getting prepared to go to our fifth Sunday. Amen. Fellowship with our uh, sister church. Amen. Come on. I know somebody's getting ready to go to fellowship with our sister church. Amen. That's going to be a glorious time. Please get with Deacon Inez so we can get the arrangements done. Uh, we uh, believe we have a church bus slash van that will be going, so it's making it convenient. Um, I, he, Deacon, Deacon said we had a bus, and he said it was about 15 seats. I said, that must be a small bus. Uh, and so he said, I, I talked to him, he said, oh, oh, it's a, it's a van. We call it a bus in the, in the audience. <laughs> we had a whole conversation about that. But we want to go, amen. There's room for everyone to go. We'll be leaving from this, uh, this location headed that way. Amen. We want to show our support with our sister church, amen, and fellowship, and have a high time on our first Sunday. So please, please uh, make yourself available for that, amen. We're getting ready to have our offering. Everybody ready to bless themselves? Amen. Come on, you ready to bless yourself? Amen. amen. God's been so good to us um, and uh, in our finances and our resources. He's been so kind to us. We just want to give back a portion of what he has given us, amen. There's various ways to give on your screen. Um, there's various ways to get on the screen. We have PayPal, amen. We have Cash App, we got Gillify, amen. Um, we have all type of different ways. You can even mail your your monies in. And we're asking that you might support, amen, and contribute uh, to this great cause, amen. We thank God for our youth. We have our, in the middle, if you have any loose chains, any loose chains, we have uh, our young people to collect that. If you have a blue change in your pocketbooks and your wallets, amen, we will receive that in Jesus' name. Amen. Are y'all ready to give? Amen. We're going to have some music and we're going to get ready to give. And then Sister Taylor's going to bless the offering after that. Jeff, please stand. Amen. 
our inspiring missionary, Minister Cope. Amen. She's going to deliver the word on today. Amen. As as she feeds, sees fit according to what God has given her, we ask that she might just have your ears open. Be attentive to what thus said the Lord as we are blessed. After a selection from our youth department choir, the next voice you will be hearing will be from Minister Cope in her own way as the Lord leads and guides her. Amen. Amen.
that feel worthless, who feel that they have no purpose, no calling, no vocation. And as I began to dive into Jeremiah 1, I read some incredible verses that invoke a sense of hope, that mandate us to find our calling, to walk in a path that pleases God, more so it doesn't matter what stage of life you're at, God has a calling and a purpose for each of us to fulfill, and our duty is to answer that calling. Yes. And when we begin to think that all of our successes and failures come from a source far greater than ours, we are being led to walk into right. our calling. Here's something to think about. The richest place in the world is not South Africa's gold mine. It's not the Nigeria oil wells. It's not the United States of America's silver mine, but rather it's the cemetery. You see, the cemetery contains millions of ideas, visions, and dreams that were not fulfilled. Mm. It contains books that were not written, songs that were not sung, cars that were not manufactured, buildings and towers that not, were not constructed, so forth and so on. You very well may be asking yourself, what is God's will for my life this morning? Harmony, God's will for your life is for you to die empty. In other words, leaving this world fulfilled as Jesus did on the cross when he says, it is finished. As Apostle Paul said, I have fought the good fight, I have run the race, and I have kept the faith. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 19 and 21 reminds us that many are the plans in the man's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose, counsel, that will stand. How many know this morning that the Lord God created everything with purpose? Yes. You see, people who lack purpose often do not understand or accept themselves. So they end up competing with those around them, right? right? They will try to imitate someone else's appearance. They will seek to take the place that belongs to another or attempt to steal the blessings that have been poured out on others. But let me pause parenthetically. I remind my children all the time, even though they're 30 and 21, I always tell them, be yourself. Everybody else is taken. Right. Yeah. Such competition arises from a missing sense of identity and ignorance of the fact that each individual has a distinct purpose in life. That's it. Those who do not know their purpose will always be insecure. God has a purpose for everyone and everything he created. Yes. Proverbs 16 and 14 says, The Lord has made everything for its purpose, even the wicked for the day of trouble. In the case of human beings, you see, our purpose is the original intent of God, his determination and his desire for us when he gave us life. When I refer to our creation by God, I am not talking primarily about our earthly birth, but rather our design by him in eternity outside the chronos or chronological time that we function under in the world. You see, God has given each and every one of us a period of time to fulfill our purpose on earth. That's why it is necessary for us to understand and start to follow our purpose as soon as possible. We can't waste time because if you want to be a writer, I encourage you today to walk into your purpose. If it's that career that you're searching for, right. walk into your purpose. Do what you have to do in order to achieve your dreams. Yes. Encourage yourself and say, I got to do me. I don't hear nobody. I gotta, do I gotta do me. Nobody wanna do me this morning? I'm, 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 I gotta do me. I gotta do me. Amen. I gotta do me. I gotta do I me. Gotta do me. <laughs> Kingdom you. We must live with a clear and defined mission for our lives. The Bible states that everything there's a reason, a time for every purpose under the heaven. It is time to discover our kingdom purpose and begin to achieve it. Watch this. As you're walking in your purpose, you have to trust the process. Uh -huh. You see, the God we serve has made a way for you and for me, and all we have to do is have faith. Trust him and believe that God will see you through. When it comes to discovering your purpose, it is important that you understand from the onset that the plan of you predated birth of you. You begin as a brilliant thought in the mind of God. That it was so profound that it was him alone who motivated himself to bring you into this world. And we thought about you, who you would become, and what you would do. Guess what? God smiled and said, you know what? Now that's good right there. Everything in life has it before. It all has to start somewhere. This is even evident in all the areas of science. If you think about it, to progress forward in science is really to look back with more precision. Science teachers... Excuse me, science teaches us that in order to understand what is presently is, 
we must attempt to look back and discover what was. As knowledge and science increases, we have to come to understand what to place in the before and in the why. Just as the world has a before, so do we. We often get so preoccupied with the here and now that we fail to consider that our life has a before. In this realm of the before, that we find that the plan for our life has a blueprint and the schematic containing everything that it is, was, and will ever be. Listen to this. Six months before Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated, he delivered a speech entitled, What is Your Blueprint? In other words, what is your purpose? Mm -hmm. He said, if it fills your lot to be a street sweeper, sweep streets like Michelangelo painted pictures, sweep streets like Beethoven composed music, <coughs> sweep streets like Latonio Price sings before the Metropolitan Opera, sweep streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry, streets sweep so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will have to pause and say, here lived a good street sweeper who swept his job well. If you can't be a pine, be at the top of the hill. Be a shrub in the valley. Be the best little shrub on the hill. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. Uh -huh. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be a sun, be a star. Right. For it isn't by size that you win or fail. Be the best of whatever you are. You see, Kingdom Youth today, this is my definition of true purpose. Pay close attention to these next three words. Purpose isn't easy. Purpose will challenge you. It always requires letting go of formal things and the way that you think. There may be ways you felt about yourself that you're going to have to change. There may be things about you that you're going to have to learn how to deal with. There ever may be some ideas that you right now that you just can't deal with because you just can't handle the challenges in life. But guess what? In the end, it will all be worth it. Why? Because you had purpose and because you had patience. Whatever you have to go through, whatever you have to give up, and whatever ideas that you have, you have to cast some things inside in order to move forward with your life. In Jeremiah 1 and 5 this morning, we see that finding purpose is about getting back to the place where you and purpose once were. When God says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you, he speaks in two different realms. He speaks in the before realm, and he speaks in the present realm. The before realm is the internal, invisible, and timeless realm. This is the realm where creation exists, but not only in thought form. The present realm is the visible realm of creation in physical form, after the thought has been manifested. Creation in physical form is the world we live in. Here we can actually see and touch the things that are around us. You see, it is important, New Beginnings you, to understand that our visible world first began in the invisible realm. The scripture illustrates the point this way. By faith, we understand that the world was created by the word of God so that the things that we now see were made by the things we cannot see. In discovering God's purpose for your life, there are five basic questions you must have to answer. And I pray to God that somebody is taking notes because this is going to bless you. Number one, who am I? That's your identity, right? Number two, where am I from? That's my heritage. Why am I here? Once again, that's my purpose. What can I do? That's my potential. And number five is, where am I going? And guess what? That's your destiny. Out of all the five questions that I just asked, I believe number three is the question we all struggle with. Why am I here? How many of us struggle with this question on a daily basis? Let me take you back to my childhood. I remember my grandmother used to tell me, you better figure it out. Time waits for no one. You see, right. it used to aggravate me when she right. would say, all right, nothing comes to a sleep but a dream. Scared to respond, I would say to myself, Jesus, Grandma, I'm only 16. But what she said to me made sense, that even at that age, I still struggle to understand why am I here? What is my purpose and how am I going to do it? Guess what? When you are in search for your purpose, or even when we get frustrated and when we can't figure it out, and when life keeps pushing you backwards, the first question we all scream is, why am I here? Uh -huh. This is a timeless question, tied to questions of purpose and personal worth, and yes, unanswered questions. Why am I here is a very important question to ask, and the answer one arrives at determines how one thinks of himself and interacts with the world. Kingdom you, remember this. In Psalms 89, David asks, I remember how short my life is. In other words, it's not that long. Why did you create us? For nothing. 
Job asked the question, why should I work so hard for nothing if there's nothing, if there's no meaning and purpose? Why am I even doing this? Solomon even asked the question uh, for significant uh, pleasure. He says, laughing and having fun is crazy. What good does it do? Is there any significance to what I do? Why keep going without meaning? Life is petty. With life, life is trivial. And with life, guess what? It's pointless. Isaiah said this, May your work all seem so, my work, excuse me, all seem so useless. I have spent my strength for nothing and for no purpose at all. And knowing and glorifying and serving the Lord, we have the answers to why we are here. And all that we do, even in everyday tasks, we can glorify God. We need to know this morning that without purpose, life is motionless, without meaning. It has no activity without direction. Right. Events seem reasonable. Yet, it's never too late to discover our God-ordained purpose. We need to understand today that God makes everything with a purpose. Uh -huh. Every plant has a purpose. Every animal has a purpose. And if you're alive, that means God gave you purpose for your life as well. Right. Proverbs 19 and 21 says, There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. In this verse, I see three things. Number one, purpose is more important than the plans. Number two, purpose is more powerful than the plans. And guess what? Purpose precedes plans. All right, each of us have had, excuse me, each of us have been led to different destinations by different paths, journaling through unique circumstances to get to where we are today. Where you are right now, where you are in this moment, guess what? This is your kingdom purpose. This is the very place that God has sent you at this present moment in time. And whether you believe it, your kingdom is substantially or completely irrelevant if you're still standing there and trying not to do nothing. I know some of you today have questions about life, about why does this person have more than I do, or God, am I really worth it? But today, New Beginnings you. I challenge you to block out doubt. I challenge you to shut down negativity yes. because guess what? Even when you feel like no one has answers, yes. God wanted me to remind you of this. You are a chosen generation, yes. a royal priesthood, a holy yes. nation, and you are definitely a peculiar people. Yes. As I take my seat, remember this through your school year. Romans, excuse me, Psalms 8, 4 through 9. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you set place, what are mere mortals that you concern yourself with them, humans that you watch over with them with such care. You made them built little lower than the angels. You crowned them with glory and honor. You had them rule what your hands made. You put everything under their feet, all the flocks and the herds and the animals of the wild, the birds, the sky and the fish in the sea, and all that swim the paths of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. All he created, he planted under you. He has set us in charge to rule over all the creation. Who am I, you might ask? Well, guess what? I am his. We are core hairs, co-hairs with him to bring the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, this is our responsibility now as children of God. The creation is placed under the feet of all those who are children of God and now who are to submit everywhere we walk placed under him. Matthew 16, 13 through 16 says, When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do people say that I, the Son of Man, am? So the Son said, Some say John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. And others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Who you are or who you become depends on who you say I am. New beginnings, you be encouraged today for this is your kingdom. This is your year to walk in purpose yes. and on purpose.
do pray those that were viewing, those that were listening, amen, gather something from what she has said, amen. She didn't have that hoop and holler, but she had a tremendous word, a valuable word, yes. amen, that we all have purpose, amen. I wrote down some things. Um, where, where, where are you going? Where do you come from? Yes. Amen. These are things that we, you as young people, have to start to ask yourself because we as adults still sometimes ask ourselves these things. Yes. But God has everything under control, and He has your best. He has your best interest in hand. So that's what we should discuss these things, man. I thank God for the Word. Amen. Amen. Got a little living my life on purpose. I might work that one out one day. Living my life on purpose. Amen. Amen. We thank God. We do want to pray with our young people. Amen. We do understand that this is the beginning of a new year. Hallelujah. Um, I think this is our first fourth Sunday since they've been back in school. So, man, I want to get our prayer warriors, amen. I want to get, uh, we want to touch and agree. All my young people, you can come to the altar. We're praying for your family also. Facebook, amen. Wherever you may be, we might not be able to touch you physically, but our prayers are going out for your family, your children, your loved ones, your daughters and your sons, your grandsons and your granddaughters, your nieces and nephews, because I believe that God is going to put a hedge of protection around our young people. So if you that believe and have faith that God is still able, he can protect you from COVID, he can protect you from the bullet, he can protect you from bad grades, and God can do it. God can give you more than enough. We pray for wisdom, we're praying for protection over our young people, amen. All stand with me, all right. Stand with me and just point your hands toward our young people. Hallelujah. If you could just say a prayer, amen. We're going to pray for them like they were our own kids, our own nieces and nephews, and our grandkids, our own sons and daughters. Amen. We're going to pray for our young people, amen. We're going to pray for you out there also uh, that God will continue to stir up the gifts that's inside of our young people, amen. There's some great things that's inside of our young people. We have some prophets. Amen. We got some prophets. We got some preachers. We got some evangelists. We got some doctors. We got some lawyers. We got some. Come on, come on, come on. Believe God is able. We got some actors in here. We got some sports. We, we have some judges. We have some nurses in here. And we're not going to let the devil take or steal anything away from them. We're praying for the protection in the school. Amen. That they'll be the head of the school and not the tail. Amen. They'll, they'll be first and not last. Hallelujah. We're praying. We're praying. We're believing God to protect them from COVID. We're believing God to protect them from any virus, any disease. We're believing God to do abundantly above all that we can ask. We're believing God that he has purpose for you. 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 He hasn't forgotten about you. He hears your cry. He hears you when you're at nighttime. When you're confused, he he's listening to you. He's listening to you. He hears you and he loves you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you love him, if you love God's people and his children, let's pray. Father God, we thank you right now for each and every individual here under the sound of my voice. God, we thank you for the each, and each and every individual that might be tuning in. God, we pray for this class. We pray for these students this year, God. God, we thank you, God, for you're going to turn some things around. We're going to be better than we were last year. We're going to go further than we did last year, God. God, we pray for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, God, that they'll retain their work. God, that they'll make good grades, God, that they'll have better attendance, God. God, we pray, God, that you might just open up their minds, God. God, that they might just have a, 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 a desire to have all the wisdom and knowledge that they can get. God, we thank you for protecting them from the hands of the enemy. Say that the Lord rebuke you. You can't have our children. You can't have our children. But these are God's kids. So God, we thank you for our kids. God, we give you glory for our kids. God, we thank you for them being the head and not the tail. God, we thank you for them being first and not last. God, now be with them, God. According to your riches and your glory, stir up the gifts inside of them. Protect each and every one of them in the name of Jesus.
are in your corner. We might not have all the answers, but we believe God. So be strong. Amen. Stay encouraged. Listen to your parents. Do the right thing. And God will take care of the rest. Amen. Let's give a hand clap to our young people. Come on, they did a fabulous job. We thank God for Sister Michelle Sally. We thank God for our pastor. Amen. Allowing us to go forward. Amen. To our first lady in this house. We thank God for the deacons being in the house. Amen. We thank God. We thank God for you, you, and you. You are the MVP. Y'all may be seated. Amen. We thank God for what he has done thus far in this house. Purpose, purpose, purpose. Hallelujah. I thank God for that word coming out of Jeremiah. Purpose, purpose. I, amen. I, we need to know where we're going, how we got to where we are now. God, where do you want to take us? <laughs> where, 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 where do we go from here, God? And I believe we align our purpose to the will of God. Everything will work out all right. Everything will work out all right. Amen. We had a great time today. I don't know about you all. I'm encouraged to see all our youth here today. Amen. I think this is all our youth here today. We might be missing too. The little Sheila Whites and Deacon Whites little ones. I, we, 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 let them, we, we, we drafted them in. Amen. But other than that, I believe all our most high youth is here today. I almost made me want to do something for y'all. I'm praying about it. Telling God to give me purpose and direction about it. Amen. But we thank God for everyone being here. We thank God for my wife being in the house. Amen. We just give God praise. We're not going to keep you. Again, thank you, Sister Minister Chelsea Cole, for giving that word on today. God bless you. We pray that your husband, Mr. Cole, will have a speedy recovery. Amen. And at this time, we're gonna we're gonna have our last words after Deacon after Deacon Inez. We're gonna have our last words from our own pastor. He's gonna dismiss us. We have an announcement. With the permission of Pastor, just a show. My purpose on asking for two minutes of my time is to. I've contacted um. I have a list of people I've contacted during the week concerning Sunday. Sister Dina, forgive me, I was looking for your number and so I couldn't find it in my phone to contact you about this. Um, just about people who are interested or who are planning on going on Sunday to our fifth Sunday celebration. And we have, we have a 15 seater bus, a van. In my culture, a van is an open luggage van. So we say boss, so <laughs> sorry for that. Um, but I have a list of people who I've contacted and um, was responding. I sent a text message and they sent to you too because I know you're going to be there. So, and as to who's going because we need to know who's going so we can have enough. So we have two, so I'm going to put your name down. For those who I've contacted who responded and who has payment today, you can. Or we must have it by Sunday because we need to know exactly the bus is being covered. The van is being covered. My van. <laughs> um, I do not know the location where Tandaka is, so if so, we can know like what time the bus is gonna leave, so we can all be in one accord and know exactly when we're supposed to be here. What time the, the idea is we're gonna leave from here, so we're gonna park here, then all go together and then return here. So I guess by so we okay, the pass will tell us that and. For those who are traveling, like myself, from way out, I don't know if at church we can probably have a small meal and just fellowship together. And I wouldn't be driving all the way back to Claymont or to Sydney to come back. So, yes. Thank you. Amen. We thank God. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the service on this morning. We thank God for the wonderful uh, service that the youth have done. I'm not going to repeat everything. Amen. But uh, definitely see Dick and David uh, so that he can explain in detail uh, what he wants to do for our good Sunday. Uh, so if he does not hear by everybody by Tuesday, amen, we assume that everybody will be driving their cars. Amen. 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 We're working with time. Amen. Uh, we want to say thank God ahead. Uh, just something I want to go over real quick. The men department are... Men's president is not here, 
Um, but the message is on this Wednesday at 8 p.m. Um, there will be a virtual meeting um, with all the men on Wednesday at 8 p.m. in preparation for the annual Men's Day service. All right. And I heard uh, our youth pastor talking about all of the youth being here and being present. I'm going to ask all parents, hey, allow your youth to do something in ministry. Uh, we still have some families that are not actively participating in the youth department. And it would just do my heart so good because if I had children in here, I promise you my youth would be actively uh, involved in ministry. Amen. It, it makes me sad when I see some youth that are still not active in their ministry. So can we do that, parents? Can we do that, young people? Y'all love your church? Amen. 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 You love pastor? Amen. <laughs> can you do something? Amen. On Youth Sunday, amen. If you're not raising the offering, um, if we're not um, ushering, the youth should be ushering. Um, if we're not, just do something. All right. So I'm looking for the youth directors. If you see something that's missing in the youth, they may not want to sing. Find something for them to do. All right. Let's just find something for them to do. Amen. Let us stand. Time has been spent. Amen. Sister Deaconess um, Burnett has brought the time clock, and she's happy that it's 1220 so that we can go. Amen. Uh, let's keep the saints in prayer that are under the weather, and I know that God will raise them up. Amen. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for all that you have done through the ministry of music. You are preaching through the preached word of Minister Cope. God, now everything that she has uh, deposited uh, to us on this morning, God, we pray that you restore it back unto her. As we leave this place, but never from your presence, protect us. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. amen.